designer slash strategist here at Purpose, and I kind of wanted to share some thoughts on movement design, what it means to build a movement, design for a movement. Um, but kind of taking you through sort of an oblique path, uh, through the path of capoeira, which I've been training for the last year or so. It's a Brazilian martial art disguised as a dance, as a game. Um, also through sort of the movies. I like to watch movies. I'm a film school dropout, so I thought I'd make some movie references here. Um, and also through Oscar Wilde, who is kind of a literary hero of mine and just sort of a genius in terms of his use of words and language. So. Let's get started. But we're faced with this blank space, the blank screen, the white paper. I think it's probably one of the most, most intimidating things for any creative person, anybody who wants to create something or to build a movement. It's full of possibilities, yet sort of empty. So what do you do? So my proposal is to sort of start with a circle, not in this like crazy Zen way, but just sort of a basic geometric shape, a circle. Um, to occupy that negative space, but also to build a circle of friends. So you want to sort of build a posse, if you will. Um, capoeira is done in a circle called a roda in Portuguese. Um, it takes lots of people on the outside of the perimeter of, of the circle to um, create the space and to play the instruments, to clap and to sing while two people at a time are playing the game inside. So you're building your posse. Um, it's just like the movies, whether it's the seventh samurai and you have to sort of recruit reluctant samurai to help you get rid of the bad guys, or if it's Ocean's Eleven, um, if you're a George Clooney fan, or if you prefer the Rat Pack, either way, you kind of have to build this diverse team of people of different skills, different personalities, to really get the job done. Um, the American writer Peter Sheldahl sort of talks about the process of creating a movement. Uh, he talks about, you know, this is how you start. You move to a city, which I did. I moved to New York um, in 2006 from a small town in rural Japan um, where I was teaching English. And um, you hang out in bars, which anybody can do if you're over 21 or have an older sibling with an ID. It's, that's easy. <laughs> um, and then you form a gang. And from that gang, you turn it into a scene. And then from that scene, you turn it into a movement. So that can apply to an artistic movement, a political, social movement. It's kind of the same thing. Um, so in Oscar Wilde's case, he sort of was hanging out in bars and doing all sorts of interesting things with his circle, um, his aesthetic circle. Um, they were also sort of his lovers, his friends. There was this kind of blurriness there, this ambiguity, which was interesting, which takes us to the next point of be blurry. You know, I'm sort of an artist, activist, designer, strategist. Um, there are sort of lots of different labels, yet no labels, and I'm kind of comfortable with that ambiguity. And in Oscar Wilde, as sort of the dandy figure, um, was full of contradictions himself. He was a devoted family man, he was married with a wife, but he had relationships with men. He was an Irish nationalist, yet he sought fame and later found infamy in England. Um, and there's this kind of interesting parallel between Oscar Wilde as the dandy esthete and this sort of figure of the Malangru in Capoeira, who's kind of this guy in a white suit here. He's kind of this like pimp type character, a ne'er do well, um, who sort of is a womanizer but doesn't really work. He just kind of gets by by scheming. But that actually takes a lot of skill and sort of smarts to do that. And you need that to build a movement. So it's a kind of being a sort of dandy or a Malangru is kind of an aesthetic resistance, if you will. Um, and Coupler itself is kind of blurry. It's a game, it's a martial art, it's a dance. Uh, the Brazilian slaves sort of hid their um, training of this martial art as a dance to sort of uh, fool the slave master so they wouldn't know what was going on. Um, and then Kapura also sort of emphasizes evasion, sort of getting out of the way, sort of ducking like this, doing different moves like that instead of sort of blocking or sort of um, confronting directly. Um, so it's a kind of direct, indirect resistance. Um, and in this sense, like, an attack is a defense. Soundtrack or anthem is We Shall Overcome, or it's Give Peace a Chance, or it's that scene in Casablanca where they all sing the Marseillaise as sort of a galvanizing force against the Nazis. You should have a soundtrack to your movement. So just keep moving. A movie stops if you don't keep the film moving. And in Capoeira, there's Jingo, the basic move that sort of flows through everything. So you don't want to stop that. Um, and it's all about the transitions, right? Um, websites break at the seams, buildings break at the seams. And in Capoeira, too, it's those transitions of like one attack to another attack. And it's like, it's easy to do one kick, but it's hard to sort of chain them together. 
but don't go too fast. Um, in the traditional form of capoeira, it's all about sort of close to the ground, slowness, cunning, and strategy, which is um, a lot of what we do when we're building movements here. Um, so the circle has no beginning, no end, so I end as I began by asking you to start with the circle. Thank you.